Hey guys, it's Ellen. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to have lots of fun with wet on wet, splattering, moving paint around. We're going to create this really kind of loose, abstract kind of, you know, ocean wave. Um, I think it's a lot of fun for people who get out of their comfort zone of doing wet on wet. And simple colors, just blues, a little touch of yellow because we're going to be turquoise, and some white gouache. Um, I go over the step by step, there's no need for any trays or anything, and you can get really creative with this. It's just something fun to get you loose and, you know, playing with color. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'd love to hear if you'd like to paint and wet on wet, if you really enjoy it. Give me a comment below. I'd love to hear about all of it. Also, check out my Patreon ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials in the top tier, and a live stream once a month for me. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You can check it out in the top right hand corner in a second. And without further ado, let's get riding the wave by painting the wave. All right, guys, so let's go over supplies. Um, for today, I'm using an artist block. I'm using this Fabriano um, 300 chisholm, 140 pounds, 100% cotton cold press Artistico traditional white pad. Um, I bought this on a sale on Jerry's Adorama and I actually, when I did my first wave, which is this one right here, boom, um, I liked it because it, you know, it dries nice and flat. Blocks are expensive though, so if you don't have a block, you might want to just tape down some paper, um, like an arch paper, because you need a nice good thick 100% cotton paper that's going to have a nice bleed to create this this wave. Um, we're using like six colors. So I have neutral tint, indigo, Prussian blue, peacock blue, cadmium yellow deep, and I have gouache. So actually five colors and a gouache. And a couple of floppy brushes. I don't know if I'll use this big one. I kind of started the other one with this small one, but I might want to use the big one. So I have the Neptune series number six and number 12. And then for the little skinny... Um, splashes of white. We can use the Prince Neat Long Round or whatever skinny long round brush we have. Whatever works. And we have my water toes here, you can see. Um, so basically think of a wave, how you want to do a wave. You can do it really big like this, like I did mine. This is just like an abstract. You can have more subtle, just kind of going like this, you know, or a really big curly Q one. So get used to like just, you're going to paint wet water on the paper first in this kind of curly Q fashion, right? And then we're gonna start bleeding in color. So we might wanna mix the color first and then bleed in the colors. So why I have a yellow there is because, well, if you want a turquoise color, I'll mix the yellow. So you have this nice, uh, uh, this is an enamel tin, this is great. These are great for like wide areas. And I'll clean up my brush. And you grab peacock blue, I'll make a nice turquoise. Ooh, gonna have to add a little more yellow to that. So the water would be turquoise, it would be just a little more yellow. So you're gonna keep adding. Ooh, doesn't mind that, I don't mind that I went into the yellow. I keep adding a little more blue until I get the turquoise color that I like. You know, that greeny turquoise color. And then for these, we you know we just take them right out of the tube color, the indigo, the Prussian blue, and the neutral tint, which I use in some areas. If you want to make some really dark part of the wave, and we'll be using the peacock blue itself too. Put that over here, really bright, intense. Um, come and move this down. Intense color. And I have paper towel here close by to tap, tap, tap. So to try and show you everything without <laughs> getting the screen, there's a tap, tap, tap paper towel right here. Okay, I'm gonna clean up my brush. I am gonna use this. I might use this to put the water in, but I think I'm gonna use the other one, the number 12. It seemed like I had more control with this, but then again, bigger strokes might be better. So we'll play around with that. I had to clean my brush first. Okay. So what I did for this wave is just like, again, you've talked about this curl. You're gonna just kind of wet the curl. See, I'm just putting water where I want that wave to be. You see how you can see the shine of it. 
just the curl for now. I'm going out to the edge. See how I went out to the edge? And then I'm going to wet up here. I'm going to leave a space kind of like in between. See, like a nice space in between the wave and the side edges of the paper. I'm just going to wet that part section and over here. And now we're just going to grab the paint we have. I started playing with uh, peacock blue first. See, putting in the wave. We can make the waves bigger as we go. Okay. Adding the turquoise. Turquoise. Get all that turquoise color. I might add the turquoise first and then go and add some deeper color. Now I'm going to go grab some of this indigo up here. It's very wet. I'm going to grab some of that indigo and put it up here like I did on my other one. See, just kind of wetting that. Grab some of the tip of my brush. You grab some of that neutral tint color, really dark. See, grabbing it here also. I do want this wave looks really skinny. I want it to get bigger. So I'm cleaning my brush. And you're going to be playing around with these different blues. You don't have to follow exactly how I'm doing it. I just want to make this wave a little bit bigger. I'm going to add some like navy indigo in here. See, there's the wave, the little curl. But we're going to have we're going to do some abstract bleeding stuff. It's getting really wet. I'm going to grab some of that turquoise. I do want the turquoise in there for a nice color effect. Taking my brush, mixing peacock and indigo, going in here. And now we're going to start to play around with bleeding some color on the outside. So I've, it's, it's my brush is wet, but it has some of the color from it. Going here, I'm still leaving that white area. I'm going to grab some indigo. Excuse me, neutral tint. See, I'm kind of leaving like the little. I'm just kind of splattering it around here. I'm still leaving that white edge. And then I'm going to start to go in here like this. I'm going to kind of bleed it a little bit. Soften that edge. You don't want this hard wave. And then I'm going to go in here, grab some more of that. Neutral tint color. We can always kind of lift some of the paint too. See, I'm gonna add, lift. Go back over here, grabbing some of my indigo. Now I, you can make it turquoise, like there's the ocean back here. I kind of just wanted an atmospheric kind of sky. If you want to make it like the oceans here, just go straight across. Start using some of your colors. Here's the peacock blue, really bright. See. More of a straight, there's the ocean across there. <laughs> Playing around with the different ways to do it. But I, I kind of, diff I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep it more atmospheric. So here I'm going to remove some of that. Very wet, see? Very wet and wet. Removing, bleeding, removing. And you remove it like a mop. See how I'm lifting that paint? We are going to add some water. And some neutral tint in here. Just bleeding some of this color. It will all make sense. <laughs> can you kind of remove it? You can kind of add some more deep color. I'm adding some more indigo. It is very wet. That's why I like to, chose to do this in a block. It would be, oops, sorry. It would be less of an issue. Grabbing this peacock blue. And we're still going to go back in with indigo. See? To add some neutral tint to the indigo. Just take the tip of my brush, wiggle it up here, getting a little bit darker with that wave. Kind of put some spots going downward like this, some strokes. Put a couple in here. I'm fill that page. I'm cleaning up my brush. 
again, we kind of removed the paint. See, I kind of just wiggled some of that paint, removing it. Now, I did talk about I have white gouache. We're gonna be using that in simultaneously by painting it. I know this is an exercise and really just kind of playing wet on wet really fast. Gonna add some more of this neutral tint with indigo up here. Add some Persian peacock blue. It's kind of like a deep dark wave. It's kind of how I did it. And I'm removing some paint. See how I wiggle, tap it back on my paper towel. And in here, because I really want to just kind of this loose kind of wet feel to it. Going to add the indigo with the um, neutral tint. Get the darker shade in here. I'll do some more streaks coming out this way. So you can play around with adding darker color if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be dark. You can make more, you can make this completely like so much lighter than what I'm doing. And this bleed out here, I want to remove some of it. See that? Now, we're going to start playing around with adding some gouache. Got some white gouache here. Take my brush. Let me clean my brush. Let's see. I'm going to do a little streaks. If it gets too bleedy, make them skinnier. That's why this, maybe this big brush wasn't good for this part. Just adding a little bit of white. And you can add a little bit of white out here. See, I'm kind of just tap tapping it. Grabbing it. Twisting my brush, tip tapping it. Letting it do its thing. This is an abstract wave, so it doesn't have to look like anything particularly perfect. And then going in and adding some white. This time I'm going to start grabbing my number 12. And then I'm going to start taking the indigo and the neutral tint. And I want it darker up in here. Play around with that. Adding in some deeper color. And you can still, you know, play around with adding the turquoise. Getting a little bit darker in here. The blues. Mine did go all the way to the edge here. I really want it to go to the edge, so I'm gonna clean up my brush. Kind of push the paint around. And I'm gonna get a little bit deeper up here. It's still very damp, so you can still play with it. This is like a fast moving kind of thing. So maybe if you want to practice on some cheaper paper first, that might work. I'm going in and adding in some darker color again here. Just on the outer part of the wave. Okay. If it feels too dark for you, you can kind of remove the paint like I told you. Um, so maybe I want to add more turquoise up in here. I kind of lift some of this paint. And this, see, I'm lifting, tapping on my paper towel. Look at that white. I'm going to go grab this pretty turquoise. And maybe add that back in there. So you can add some stuff. Lift. <laughs> Again with the gouache, I do want to splatter some of this now while it's wet. Um, if you don't want all the splatter up here, you might want to cover it, but it's so wet so it's going to be difficult. So try as best as you can to kind of concentrate it, getting it wet here, down here. Taking up, it's really wet so I want to get it a little bit thicker. It's going to create some fun ocean splatters. Right? Stepping back a little bit up 
higher, creating that fun splatter of the ocean. Wow. <laughs> and then you can start to play with taking the gouache. See, it's, it's wet, but it's not super wet. And then you can just kind of bleed some of this. See, I'm just kind of tapping it. Some of the white. Right? You can play around with adding some of that down here. I'm going to water this one down. And you can remove it too. So I might want to move some paint out here. See, I'm doing my twist with my brush. When I'm finished removing the collar, you know, all that fun stuff, then we're going to wait till it dries. And I'm going to go in and add the nice various lines and some deeper tones. Again, you want to just tap in some deeper tones. I might go in here and add just a few more deep streaks from my wave. All right, I'm going to let this sit. And then we'll come back and finish it up with the white gouache and maybe some dark tones and we'll be done. One thing I didn't talk about is that you can do also is you can kind of remove some paint. Look at those kind of little cool effects with the paper towel. And you get this really kind of funky texture looking. So it doesn't have to just be the paintbrush. It can be a paper towel as well. Play around with that. Okay guys, once it's dry, I'll take my Princeton 8 long round and I'll grab my white gouache. This looks a little bit more like light blue. I might have to grab some actual regular white gouache. You can start to take your brush and you can make little, little lines, wiggle them, kind of break them up. And that will look like the waves getting ready to crash up in here. I'm just going to make some like, you know, wiggles, splattering of the white part of the, the wave, you know, it kind of comes down and a little bit over here. Just kind of like a little mushy kind of movements. See, just grabbing that gouache. Just kind of pushing it like this, right? And you can go in here and do the same thing. And a little line that's kind of broken and then kind of push down, push around it. So it looks like the waves kind of crashing. But down in here, you take your brush go up and down here, kind of follow the wave, the curve, some of the lines kind of broken like wiggle. Just imagine how you'd see it. There's lots of like photographs out there, but this is supposed to be more of an abstract feeling of a wave. See, just going pretty fast. I wouldn't put a ton of the white stuff in here. You know, kind of go up and down and curve and wiggle that. You can also, by the way, when it's dry, go back in and kind of put another glaze of color like Here's that peacock blue. I really like the bright blue. So if I wanted to go back in and add some really bright blue or turquoise, I can go do that before I would do the gouache. Just giving you things to do, guys. See, if you want to make a little bit brighter, maybe you didn't like so much navy colors in there, just go back in. Let's just dry. You know it's going to dry lighter, so I can kind of put this in between my white and make a little turquoise again, my yellow. Make a nice pretty turquoise. See, now it's a little bit brighter. I'm gonna add some of that out here. There are no rules, just playing. Because it will dry lighter. So you can go back in and have another little wash of color. See, I'm just adding some nice bright 
it's it was looking a little too navy for me in this one and I wanted to brighten it up a little bit so I'm adding some of that bright beautiful blue you can still go back in there with your whites so I'll go back with my whites do all the little lines maybe make some bigger sections like right in here when the waves are really starting to come into play right again here I'm going to tip tap splattering like the, like the waves you can if you want it to splatter a little bit right there just get real close to it not too much though get a little bit wetter that was too concentrated okay. Now it looks like it's really kind of, and splatters from down here. The small of the brush is tiny, the splatters. You might want a bigger brush. Gives that whole feeling. Just again, take your white wash, kind of make it look like the waves crashing. Put some more white up here. See, gonna go on the outside. I'm holding it kind of on the side, kind of pushing it around. This is what you're gonna do to create that crispy wave. And you can add a little more white here and go up. Get, you know, inventive how you'd wanna do it. Just showing you how easily this is to create. It was so easy, you're just painting like this. And just the same thing. I wouldn't do a lot of white up in here. You do a few lines. You can add most of it right in here. Right, or it's splashing over. You see that? You guys can paint this really big. I'm adding a little bit white out here on the outskirts here. Splashy splash. There's so many ways you can do this. Make this wave skinnier, bigger, wider. I just think it's the most fun thing to do wet on wet. Gear up for summer. <laughs> Get you in the mood. See, I'm getting a little bit more white here. Don't do too much white. You might get a little white crazy, you know. Put a little couple of lines up in here. But pretty much this is it. You can play around with the splashes. I might add a little splashy. Getting a little, I'm holding it on the side. Kind of pushing it around, getting a little more creative with the gouache. But that's really all you need to do. You can add a little kind of lines like it's going up. Again, same thing out here. If you want to do some tip taps of like dots that it's splashing out here, go ahead and do that, even up in here. Let the waves go wild and crazy. And even down here and over in here. Seriously, this is so much fun to do. Right? Does it, was it that hard? I don't think so. I really don't. You can take, it might be too dark inside here. Again, you wanna lighten it up a little bit. Put the brighter colors in here, the turquoise. You can just play around with a little turquoise in here. But I really think it's so doable for any of you guys to do this. And pretty, actually. If you're somebody who loves the ocean, they would totally love this. So let me know your thoughts on this wet and wet wave. And, like, I'd love to know. Like, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you've come up with. A lot of people tag me on Instagram. See, if I want to make this one, this whole wave, you didn't have to follow me with the, the navy colors and the you can put more aquas in here. I'm adding a little more aqua in here. Have fun with it. I could sit there and do this all day. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Tell me if you like the wet on wet wave. Tell me if you like want to see some more ocean. I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on this kind of stuff. I think playing with the wet on wet and just a little bit of gouache, that's all you need, you know? And it's really easily to do the wet on wet on a block than it is on a paper that is kind of tied, uh, taped down. It's gonna, eventually this block, you see it's 
bubbling now, but it's going to lie like this one did, super flat. Look at the difference. This one was more of a squirrel. This one's a little wider squirrel. You know, a little more blue blues. We've got some more aqua on this one. There's so many variables you can make with this. If you want to go back here, too, and uh, hold on, I'm going to grab some paint. Burn this down a little bit. Kind of paint out here, behind the wave. Colors, a little more. I, I just can play with this stuff all day. It's a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to get a little bit darker. See? So those waves show up a little bit more. See I add a little bit of the dark. See how that just shows up more? If I put that dark right behind this wave. Kind of crashing. See? You just make everything a little bit different from the first one. All these fun things you could do. Play around with your wet on wet media. Yeah, going back and in. Just another layer of color and then you see that whole white whoosh, wave. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for stopping by. And please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorial is up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. We have fun over here. I'm going to go back in and see. Play. Ooh, add some white. You guys, this is just so much fun. You could do this all day. I know you could. <laughs> So take care and have a great day and I'll speak to you soon.